originally I got into 3D printing because I was into music and I started to build my own uh, controllers and I needed uh, all sorts of little knobs and faders. That's how I found uh, 3D printing. And also I found out about the Repair Project, but you know, as I'm a lazy person, uh, I started to build one myself, but it took so much time and so many parts that I eventually, you know, started to making it simpler to improve it and give back. So that's how the, the Prusa Simplified Mandel came to, uh, came to the world. Uh, then there was uh, i2, which was with the linear bearings. And a couple of years uh, after that, there was i3, which is the design you know, but uh, actually it is, the i3 is evolving for quite some time. What do you think the benefits are of open source? So as we, uh, as we make the, the Mark II very, very simple, it picked up uh, a crowd which is not uh, primarily open source. Before that, it used to be just you know the, uh, the the open source crowd, the, the Linux guys, and you know guys from hackerspace, people which were always uh, into open open source culture. The majority of our customers is a normal Joe, so they don't uh, they don't care much, but it's still very important for us. And from time to time, uh, the the old crowd is still there, and they they provide us with some improvements. They fiddle with the code, and uh, uh, they help us to make it make it better. Uh, also, when when they try to do modding, it is much much simpler for them because they have the original sources uh, available, you know, for the from the printed parts, for the firmware, for the electronics. So everybody can can easily modify. It. So we are not planning to uh, go away uh, from from open source. Uh, well, I have open hardware tattoo on my forearm anyway. So what is making your product? you know, sort of the benchmark for FDM printing? Right? Well, um, it prints nice. <laughs> but we have uh, full control uh, over, the, over, over the whole thing. We, we develop firmware, we develop the, the electronics, we develop the hardware, we also develop the slicer. So we can, we can tweak nicely everything together. And also we do not spend much time in, uh, in trying to make it look nice. We are just uh, very functional and that means that at lower lower cost we can get uh, the same print quality as the, the you know more expensive printers or for other companies which have distributors it's very hard uh, to control uh, the quality of the of the support if, if it's done by distributors so if you have bad distributor in one country it can hurt your sales or the the brand name so we we are just at the sweet spot you know we are not too we are not too expensive. We are not too, not too cheap for companies. We try to take care, good, good care of the customers, and we print nice. So that is uh, that is what is the the key to the success. This is our test station. We use it to test all the electrical components together, which will go to the to the printer. Here you have the power supply. Here is the ramble board, LCD. SD card, and, and also the, the heated bed. So this is the version number number one. We are working on a more advanced version. And here you can see the, the battery of test, which is uh, which is done on all of the all of the machines. When once the components are tested, they uh, they travel together, and just other parts are uh, added to it. So you can see that it flashes the firmware, tests the communication, SD card, all the fan inputs, uh, the, all, the, all the motor drivers, uh, tries to heat up the, the hot end, uh, also tries to heat up the heated bed, and uh, as you can see, we can print protocol from the test, which is bundled with, with every printer, and also we can, it also prints the the, the machine label with the serial number. So it get, uh, it is bundled with every printer. And this is also uh, stored, stored in our database, so we can pull out uh, how powerful were, were the heaters, uh, the heated bed, and we know for sure that the power supply can reliably uh, heat up the, the hot end and the heated bed for, for some time, so we catch 99% uh, of, the, of the failed parts.
So uh, basically, with the Mark II and Mark IIs, we did it because we, we have a giant farm of, uh, of printers here and we get to know much sooner which parts uh, can break or which are the weak, weak spots of the printer than actual users because you know after one month of use here we get so much time on the printer and in, in such harsh conditions that we, uh, we can get the failures which normal users probably will never get but you know after a year uh, almost a year of uh, producing the Mark II uh, we thought that it would be nice to, you know, give uh, those uh, longevity upgrades to the printers because they, they don't cost us much uh, in, in the production and it is, just makes the, the product better. With the multi-material, I mean, uh, I played with the idea of uh, using the wide splitter a couple of years ago and we just, we just revived that because everybody wanted us to make a uh, dual head uh, i3 and I'm not a big fan of using two nozzles because it is very hard to calibrate and we also uh, we have a large collection of uh, printers from other manufacturers and we know how hard it is to calibrate to get good results even though it was a long long way to get to the functioning product uh, uh, we, we succeeded and we uh, we now ship almost almost thousand every month and people are quite happy it seems. These are the machines, uh, how they are packaged after the after the test station. So you can see there's the power supply, electronics, LCD, heated bed and the test protocols. And the bins are organized so you know you cannot leave something out. So by, just by taking a look you know that everything is in. So right now we are in the the department where we pack all the nuts and balls and, and put them in the in the ziplock bag so you can take a look around. Uh, we grew from like 30 people to 130. Almost every day I, I meet somebody new I, I never met before uh, on the uh, hallways here in the in the new factory. And also we shipped almost or somewhere around 30,000 Mark II slash Mark II S which is incredible. We are doing almost 5,500 and next month 6,000 printers and we are still increasing the production so that is also extremely extremely good and yeah we are doing very well financially so yeah open source uh, can work and you can do a, a honest business and be successful. Has this always sort of been the ultimate aim or were you just starting off like I want to build a printer like has it surprised you? And well, what do you sort of think of all the success that you've had? Well, <laughs> to be honest, uh, I, I never expected to be this big. It, it was so fast we didn't have much time to, uh, to, to think about this. But uh, if you would ask me two or three years ago uh, that we will have factory like this, I would never ever guess that. So yes, I, I'm surprised how well it is going. I know there are certain things you can't talk about for the future, but in a general idea, what are some of like the aims of advancements that you're trying to make? Well, in production -wise? well, it is quite simple. I mean, the the goal is very simple, but the road to it is very hard. I mean, uh, the ultimate goal would be if you just uh, pick an object and you you run it through the tool chain for your printer, and it can be done by a, by a grandmother, and you know all the intelligence would be baked in. And that's that, and she would still get the perfect print. I mean, it would uh, help her decide which material to use. I mean, uh, this is too big. You cannot print it from ABS because it was curl up, try PLA, and all this sort of uh, all this sort of stuff to bake it in. And that is the the ultimate goal. And because I don't think we can go much further uh, in the in the you know print or surface finish with the, with the stuff we made like variable layer height. You know, also this can be uh, fully automatic. Yeah, this is this is the, the long-term goal for us.